Hello students and instructors. My name is Nate with Wi-Fi CFI here to talk to you today about parasite and induced drag and the differences between the two of them. Now if you don't know what drag is, remember there are four forces of flight. You got lift, weight, thrust, and drag and they oppose each other. And in this lesson, this quick tip video, we're going to be talking about drag. It is just the force that resists the movement of an aircraft through the air. And there's two different types and we're going to go over the differences between them. We've got parasite drag, which is comprised of all the forces working to slow an aircraft's movement. And as the term implies, parasite, right? It is a drag that is not associated with the product of lift. It is not helping us do anything. It is a parasite. It has no positive benefit, okay? There are three different subsections of parasite drag. So you got parasite drag and induced drag. Those are the two uh, kind of header topics, the two different header types of drag. And then there's three subcategories of parasite drag, which we're also going to talk about in this video. And they are form drag, interference drag, skin friction drag. So the other big topic or the other big type of drag is induced drag. It is an established physical fact that no system that does work can be 100% efficient. Nothing can be perfectly efficient. So think of induced drag as a byproduct of lift. Anytime the aircraft is producing lift, you're going to get drag along with that because lift cannot be, or the airplane producing lift cannot do it 100% efficiently. So induced drag is a byproduct of lift and parasite drag is just a parasite. All right, but they're both drag and they are both working to slow the aircraft down. But that is the difference between parasite and induced drag. So let's talk about the types of parasite drag. Like I said, we would remember there are three subcategories here for parasite drag. The first one is form drag. Form drag is the portion of parasite drag generated by the aircraft due to its shape and airflow around it. So just the shape of the airplane flying through the air. This will include like what the engine cowling looks like, like the shape of the engine cowling, the antennas that are sticking off the airplane and the aerodynamic shapes of the other components. You got the landing gear, you've got Everything, just, just the shape of the airplane, its form is creating drag, right? It's not perfectly aerodynamic. So it will be creating drag and that is form drag. The form of the airplane, just what it looks like, its shape is creating drag. That's our form drag. Our second type, subtype of parasite drag is called interference drag. Now interference drag comes from the intersection of airstreams and these, can, these create eddy currents or turbulence and they restrict smooth airflow. So anytime you're looking at your airplane and you see there are some hard angles where different aircraft components are connected to each other, you know, like you got like the wing root here or you got the wing strut connecting to the fuselage, you got the tail connecting to the fuselage or to the empennage, right? Anytime where you see kind of these hard angles where different aircraft components connect, what can happen is the air in that area creates what are called eddy air streams or turbulence. So that you don't have smooth airflow over these kind of sharp angles where everything is connecting. And because you don't have smooth airflow, you get turbulence and that gives you some drag. So that is our interference drag. Think of that as like the hard angles where things connect, not smooth airflow in those areas, that's gonna create some turbulence and that is going to create drag. The third one is skin friction drag. So skin friction drag is the aerodynamic resistance due to the contact of moving air with the surface of the aircraft. Every surface of the aircraft, no matter how smooth it may look or feel. Now, obviously, we didn't get a picture of an aircraft surface, you know, a wing surface that looks very smooth, but it's just to demonstrate our point, right? But it doesn't matter. Even if it did look completely smooth and felt completely smooth, it is not completely smooth when you view it under a microscope. And because it is not completely smooth, all of these rivets and the imperfections will cause drag with the airflow, right? So the air is flowing over this, it's not completely smooth. So these little rivets and the imperfection in the aircraft skin create drag. That's why we call it skin friction drag. Skin of the aircraft is causing friction. We get skin friction drag. Induced drag. So an airfoil produces lift by making use of the energy of the free airstream. If you do not know how lift is produced, we're not going over that in this video because that is a long topic. But you can go back to Wi-Fi CFI and watch our principles of flight video where we talk about all the different aerodynamics 
of flight and we discuss lift. Again, we're not talking about it here. That would take way too long. And this is a quick tip video, not a full video. All right. This is how induced drag works. Remember, we are creating lift by creating a lower pressure of air above the wings and a higher pressure of air below the wings. And remember, everything in nature wants to move from high to low. So this high pressure air that's below the wings here wants to come up and mix with the low pressure air that is above the wing to equalize itself. However, the wing is in the way, right? So the wing's in the way. We've got this low pressure suction that's bringing us up in the air, and we've got this high pressure underneath the wing relatively higher pressure. However, at the wing tips, this high pressure can sneak around and equalize with the low pressure above the wing. When it does that, these wingtip vortices are created. So this high pressure sneaking around the wingtip is going to create what are called these wingtip vortices. And these will actually wrap around and contact the top of our wing and cause drag, cause induced drag, right? So anytime our aircraft is producing lift, we will also be producing induced drag. It's a byproduct of lift. You cannot produce lift and get rid of induced drag. They will come together. They are a package deal. So if your airplane's just sitting on the ramp, it's not going anywhere. It's not moving. You're not producing lift. You're not flying. Then you don't have induced drag because it's literally just sitting there. But the moment you start moving and you start producing some lift, you will also be producing induced drag. There's no way around it. So let's look at the lift drag ratio. So parasite drag increases as airspeed increases. So remember parasite drag, the three sub forms that we were talking about in the beginning, right? As the speed of the aircraft increases, parasite drag will also increase. With induced drag, it's just the opposite. Induced drag decreases as airspeed increases. Let's go ahead and look at our chart here. All right, so I cut up my webcam so that you could see the entire chart, but this is our lift drag ratio chart. So on the bottom, you can see the speed of the aircraft and how much drag we are producing, right? Right here, our red line is our parasite drag. This is our red curve and our yellow curve is our induced drag. So as speed increases, parasite drag increases. As speed increases, induced drag decreases. And if you were to add the yellow line or induced drag amount to our parasite drag amount, you would get this orange line right here, which is called our total drag, right? All the orange line is, is if you added the yellow to the red, you would get the orange. The lowest point of the, of the total drag curve is our LD max. So at this speed, we would have the least amount of drag on our aircraft whatever the speed is. It varies per aircraft, right? This is just a generic chart. But whatever that speed is, this is the speed at which you could fly your airplane and have the least amount of drag possible. All right, let's talk about why. So why does parasite drag increase with speed? Imagine putting your hand outside of your car while you're driving. Say you're driving down the freeway or just driving through town, whatever it is. You're driving along, you roll down your window, you stick your hand out. That's basically like having an antenna on an aircraft, right? The antenna's sticking out, whether it's to the side or above, doesn't matter. The faster the speed of the vehicle, the more drag you are going to feel on your hand, right? If you're going 10 miles an hour, you stick your hand out, you're not going to feel very much wind resistance or very much drag. You'll feel a little, but not a lot. As you speed the car up, Maybe you're going 75, 80 miles an hour now. You stick your hand out of the window, you're going to feel much more drag. That is parasite drag, and it works the same way with an airplane and the components of the airplane. So the faster the aircraft is going, the more drag it is feeling. Just as if you were putting your hand out the window, you would experience the exact same thing. So slower speed, less drag, faster speed, more drag. That is why parasite drag increases with airspeed. Induced drag on the earth, on the other hand, induced drag decreases as airspeed increases. So the faster we're going, we get less induced drag. Let's explain why. So let's imagine we have two identical airplanes flying at 7,000 feet MSL. One is traveling at 120 knots and the other is traveling at 70 knots. The one traveling at 120 knots will have a lower angle of attack and is going to be more streamlined with the relative airflow. This will be thus will be producing less induced drag. So we got this airplane flying along 7,000 feet. Remember, these are identical airplanes. 
But this guy over here, he's traveling at 120 knots. So he has an angle of attack of three. So he's only pitched up maybe three degrees, right? That's his angle of attack. That's what he needs to do to maintain altitude at 120 knots. This aircraft is fairly streamlined with the wind, so it's not producing too much induced drag. However, say you wanna maintain 7,000 feet, but now you wanna fly at 70 knots, much slower, right? We're going 50 knots slower now, staying at the same altitude, maintaining altitude. In order to do that, we're gonna to have to increase our angle of attack. Now, I'm just making up these angle of attack numbers. It's obviously gonna vary with each airplane. But for example, let's say that we're flying at 70 knots, 7,000 feet, now we're going to have to have an angle of attack of seven instead of three. And you can see that the angle of attack of this airplane is much higher than this one. So this guy is not as streamlined with the wind. Hence, he is producing more induced drag. That is why induced drag decreases as airspeed increases because you're able to lower your angle of attack and be more streamlined with the wind. So faster speed. Lower angle of attack, less drag, slower speed, higher angle of attack, more drag. And that's it for our parasite and induced drag. We tried to keep that very simple for you guys. Again, we've got a full length video on Wi-Fi CFI called Principles of Flight. It's like almost a two hour long video and we go over everything that has to do with aerodynamics and we cover these things, these drag things in more depth there as well. But we just wanted to get this quick tip video out there so that you had maybe a little quick memorization thing that you could figure out the difference between parasite drag and induced drag, and then the three different subcategories of that parasite drag. There are a whole bunch more tips and tricks on wifi cfi.com, also with hundreds of hours of study content. You can go there, check it out. You can download our free mobile app where you can get thousands of flashcards full-length audiobooks, podcast lessons, all this different stuff for free, either, again, on our website at wifi.cfi.com or on the mobile apps. Thanks for joining us on this one, guys. We'll see you on the next one coming up soon.